Okay, uh, my name is uh, Lu, uh, Professor Lu Liu, and professor of the distributed computing. Today I'm very pleased to be, to be here to give my guest lecture on peer-to-peer -peer computing on complex networks. Okay, so I like in this name, <coughs> complex network. The program itself is very complicated. But today, I'm going to try to do my best, okay, to explain these kind of the complex issues in very comprehensive way. I hope at the end of the lectures, okay, everybody here can get some basic understandings of the complex networks. Okay, so today's uh, lecture is going to organize as follows. At the first, I'm going to briefly outline the key objectives of this lecture. Then the two well-known classes of the complex network, scale-free network and a small world network, will be introduced individually. Then I'm going to further explore the peer-to-peer -peer computing on these complex networks. Then I'm going to summarize the sessions at the end of the uh, presentation. At the completion of these lessons, okay, you should be able to the first, describe the factors leading to the complex network with a scale-free and also small topologies. You should be able to identify uh, some key characteristics of the scale-free and small networks. You should be able to explain the process of the evolving from the regular network towards a random network by using the rewiring constructions. I hope you can also apply the small world theories to develop the querying routing strategies in peer-to-peer -peer networks. Okay, let me first introduce the scale-free network. Uh, the, the many the networks nowadays can be models like uh, scale-free, can be like, models like complex networks, like uh, social networks, the internet, peer-to-peer -peer networks, and uh, also the, uh, in, uh, the World Wide Web. So all these networks can, uh, can be modeled uh, by the <coughs> nodes in terms of the nodes and ages. Okay? If uh, the, the, the ages represent the connections between the nodes. Uh, the two American scientists okay, map a part of the World Wide Web and it displays the result as a, as a graph. Okay, it's, it's very surprised that the result of the World Wide Web did not have an even distributions of the connectivities. Initially, they think the, the internet could be like kind of the random connectivities. But in the contrast, some of the nodes have many connections than the others. In his graphs, all the web page have been represented as nodes. If there's a link between the two web pages, these two nodes will be linked by a directed link. So in his research result, you can find the majority of the nodes only have one or two links. But a few nodes, very few nodes, have a large number of the links. Okay, so most of them only have one or two, but a few of them have a huge, okay, the 1,000 links plus. The probabilities of the nodes connect to these k other nodes with what proportional to k to the power of the consistent, which can be represented by this simple formula. These uh, similar phenomenon have been later been discovered, observed in some other networks, including our social networks including the biological networks. All these networks with the same characteristic are so-called the scale-free network or power law network because the, uh, the connectivities of this network follow the power law distribution. <coughs> okay, there's many examples as I mentioned like uh, the social networks including the collaboration network like the collaborations of uh, movie actors in films, 
Also, the biological network, like protein to proteins interaction network. Unfortunately, also the sexual partners in humans. Okay, and also the many kinds of the computer networks, including the internet, world wide web, peer to peer the, 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 the networks. And also the semantic network, which represent the semantic relationships between the different concepts. And also the airlines uh, the networks. Okay, in all these network, the same phenomena have been observed, okay? Majorities of the nodes only have very, very few links, but very, very few nodes have a huge amount of the connections, okay? Now you may ask why this could happen. Actually, this is a direct result of cell organization, <coughs> because all these networks are evolving in times, usually from the small size to larger size. The factors leading to this phenomenon is very complicated, as I mentioned. But uh, rich, get rich models have been discovered uh, by the scientists to briefly to generally explain such kind of the phenomenon. The concept, the principles, actually is very simple, it's very similar to our social networks. So where the rich people is easier to get richer. If you are millionaires, it's very easier to become the billionaires. In the World Wide Web, such, thing, uh, such uh, concept is so-called prefer uh, preferential attachment. Okay, where each new web page okay, creates links to the existing web page with the probabilities, distributions, which is not uniform, but proportional to the current in degrees of the web pages. So, a web page with many links, okay, with very famous web, web, website, can easily to attract more links than a regular web page, like your personal web page, which generates the power law distribution. For example, if you will build up your own personal website, some new website, are likely to have the links to this well-connected, well-known uh, website like Google's, Yahoo's, Amazon's, or University of Derby websites. Okay. And uh, these small uh, scale-free uh, phenomena also affect the robustness and also vulnerabilities of the computer networks. Because in the random network, only a small number of the uh, failures can collect the whole network. In a scale-free network, the random failures will very likely happen in the, in the world of the nodes with a low degrees of the connectivity which most often not serious for the connectivities of the whole network. For example, as shown in these figures, so such random failures <coughs> is very likely to happen in this no large number of the age nodes. Okay, if some failures happen here, these nodes will not affect the connectivities of the network. So that's why robustness is one of the key advantages of the so, uh, scale-free the networks. However, the scale-free network is very vulnerable to some intentional at attacks on their hubs. Okay, as shown in these figures, if some hubs where connected nodes has been attached, has or has been attacked by the enemies, the network is more rapidly fragmented than the corresponding random networks. And also this type of network is very vulnerable to spreading the disease such the virus. Because those networks can propagate the virus very effectively to the whole network. Because these well-connected hubs are passing the virus very effectively to their con connected multiple nodes. So many research have suggested 
for example, for guarantee the security of the, our internet, such well-connected hub nodes in the network, in the internet, it will be carefully protected to guarantee the dependabilities and also securities of our whole internet. Okay, now I got the first question for you. Okay, which of the following is not examples of a scale-free network? Not examples, okay? Social network, protein to protein interaction network, the network of land road in the United States, and also the World Wide Web. Which one is not examples? A, B, C, or D? Anyone can give me an answer? <laughs> Sorry? I heard D, right? Don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, right. Okay, here are the general maps of the road in the United States. So obviously, it's not scale-free network, but other network, including the social network, protein to protein interaction network, World Wide Web, are all scale-free networks. Okay, so I'm very pleased to have now got some basic understandings with one class of the complex network, which is a scale-free network. Okay, now let's move on to introduce the next element of a complex network, which is a small world network. I hope you will like it. As I mentioned, the World Wide Web is a scale-free network. On another side, the World Wide Web also have a small world topology. Small world phenomenon is a famous hypothesis that everyone in this world can be reached by a short chance of social acquaintance. In the 1960s, a okay, famous social psychologist, uh, Stanley Milgram, conducted a famous, a famous small world experiment. He sent 160 letters to a number of the recruiters in Omaha who had been asked to forward the letter to the staff brokers living in a New England, uh, New England region. So uh, they are to send uh, them uh, on to an acquaintance who they feel may know about these stock brokers. <coughs> Sign a roster and post a card. I think, uh, at the moment, I think uh, it's at least junk mail, okay? But because I think this experiment is difficult to be replicated nowadays, if you receive some strange emails or strange mails, maybe you may treat them as like junk mail and throw them into the bins. But in 1960s, the, uh, the Stanley's experiment is successful. And uh, so, everybody's got the instructions, okay? Once you receive the letters, try to get these letters closer to the final destination. For example, for destinations with the stock brokers living in the New England region. For example, you knew uh, some uh, stock brokers, so you will post these letters to them. For example, you knew somebody living in the New England regions. Okay, you will send this letter to them, hoping the next person okay, may have better understanding, they may have more knowledge about the final destination. The most famous result of his experiment is that the average length of the resulting acquaintance chain is about six. This leads to the famous phase, six degrees of the separation. Okay. This is actually the beginning of our understanding of our social network. Uh, the structures of our social net network is so-called small world structures of the network. Which means everyone in this world can be reached by a short chance of about six people. Okay, so uh, you may ask why this could be the case. Okay, uh, let me give you an example. I hope I introduce myself. I hope, I'm assuming everybody knows me. Okay, so what's distant from you to me? One. Okay, so you know me. And uh, I don't know, you know, whether you know our new dean of the college, uh, Nick. 
Okay, so what's the distance from you to Nick? Two, yeah. If you uh, know uh, Nick directly, the distance is one. If not, anyway, then you know me, I know Nick. Two, one plus one. Okay, uh, let me give you another example. So what's the distance from you to the Queen of the United Kingdom? Okay, let's come, okay? You know me, right? I know Queen. Unfortunately, not. Yes. I would be very happy if I know Queen personally. Okay, but no worry, I don't know Queen, but I know Nick. Okay, our dean of the college. Two, you know me one, I know Nick two. Nick know, uh, I believe knows uh, the vice chancellors of this university. Okay, VCs of this university three. VCs knows the ministers of the education in this country. Four, the minister, uh, the minister of education know prime minister. Okay, five, the prime minister know the queen. Six. Okay, so actually, queen is not too far away from you. Only just I think no more than six hopes away. Okay, so let's do some theoretical analysis why uh, this could be the case. Okay, uh, so if, for example, you know 100 people, and uh, the, the, uh, those, those people know 100 others, then you are just two steps away of the 10,000 people. Okay, so of course there's double counting overlaps, let's ignore it. Ignore this at the moment. So you are 10 step to 10 to 2 n people. Okay, the world population uh, nowadays is just over 7 billion. So it's about 10 to 9.8. Which means 5 hopes away, if the n exceeds 5, 5 hopes away, you're supposed to get an acquaintance is more than the entire populations of the world. Wow. But uh, as I mentioned, there are some double counting overlaps. Okay. So of course we need to change our calculations, uh, but not uh, much. Okay. The five will be six. And these uh, small world uh, phenomena, small world uh, networks are also useful to navigate the web, the, the web. Try to, for example, you try to find a, sh some, a short path, shortest path from page A to page B. So the average shortest path of, uh, is in the order of the logarithms of the size of the network. It's so-called network diameter. The average shortest path length of the entire World Wide Web is about 19 links. The hyperlinks. The diameter of the scale free network is short and also slow growing with the size of the network, which, lead, which is leading to the small world network and the small world phenomenon. That's so why is many scale free networks are also small world networks, and small world net networks are also scale free networks. 100 photo groups could only add two links. Okay, so it's a very slow group. If we, uh, the many uh, research indicated, the website of the intent data to be clustered, but at the same time, only a few links separate any one side from another. Uh, I think it's very uh, similar uh, to our social networks. Okay, for example, uh, in this uh, classroom, everybody knows each other. So, uh, maybe we're also sharing same friends. So we are highly clustered. Okay, but each of us also have some few external links towards outside. For example, I have some links collaboration with uh, uh, back to China. Okay, so which you don't have, but you have some connections, I don't know, uh, to your hometown, some people in your hometown, which we don't have. So the website is also the same thing, intended to be clustered, 
but also have few links separate any one side from another. The topologies have implications of the way you, uh, users uh, serve the website and the ease with which they gather the information uh, from the website. The link structures additionally provide the information about the underlying the relationships between the people, about their interests, about their communities. Uh, for example, in these classrooms, I think everybody, uh, no matter uh, lecturers here or students here, are all interested in uh, the computer science. Okay, the same interest gatherers. Okay, from all the countries to these universities, University of Derby, to this classroom, to this department, department of computing, to these classrooms about uh, the subject uh, in the computer science. So we are sharing the same interest. For example, if we are building our personal website, those websites could be highly uh, connected to each other. So the links structures additionally provide the information about underlying the relationships, social relationships between the peoples, their interests, and also the communities. In the 1998, okay, working much more recently, compared to the Stanley Milgram's experiment. Uh, the world, Duncan Wars, <coughs> present a mathematic model okay, to, an, uh, to analyze the small world phenomena. They explore the small world, the networks, by rewiring the, the networks to introduce increased amount of the disorders with the probabilities P. Okay, as illustrated and shown in this figure, there are three types okay, of the network. Regular networks, small world networks, and random networks. Okay? So uh, from this diagram you can see the regular network is evolving towards the random network with increasing the randomness. Okay? So these illustrate the evolving evolutions, uh, the process of these three networks. So in the regular network, the randomness factors, parameters, equal P equal to zeros, but in the random network, the P equal to one. And the networks between these two are small world networks. So from the analysis, those systems can be highly clustered, like the regular networks, and also have small characteristic parcelands, like the random networks. Okay, if you, you are interested in the Duncan World's research, you can find more information in his articles published in Nature magazine in 1998. In his research, there are highlights of the two parameters, okay, to uh, it also represent the two characteristics of the small world network. One is the uh, average path length. The second is clustering coefficient. Let's introduce, first introduce the average path length. Average path length means the average distance between the two nodes. Okay, uh, let me uh, give you a, a quick example. For example, there are three nodes. <coughs> Node A, node B, and node C. Node A is directly connected node with node B, and node B is directly connected with node C, but node A is not directly connected to node C. Will you tell me what is the average path length of this graph? Okay, let's do the uh, calculation together. Okay, the first distance from A to B. This is what? One, B to C. One, A to C. Two. Good. Equal to 
to four. Okay? So total, because every pass length is a three, right? So every pass length is about equal to 1.33. Very simple. Okay? Got the first parameters is also first characteristic of the small network. Short average pass length. Okay, let's introduce the second one. Uh, parameters, clustering coefficient. Okay, so I know everybody, many students don't like the mathematics, but here I want to show you how simple mathematically is. Okay, even in this very advanced mathematical problem. Okay, the class coefficient, the proportions of the links between the nodes within the neighborhood divided by the maximum number of the links that could possible exist between them. Okay, this is kind of the things uh, counting the number of the links uh, among a person's friends okay, in the social network. So, um, for example, in this network, we are know each other, we are sharing the same friends, the class coefficient of this network could be very high, I expect. It. Okay, let me show you another more detailed example. In this small scale regular network, each link have a four friends, okay, have a four neighbors. For example, this one, they have four neighbors, okay. One, two, three, and four, okay. Only four direct link neighbors, only four friends. And <laughs> now let's go back to the uh, definitions. How to calculate the clustering coefficient? We need to get the proportions of the, the first links between the nodes. Okay. The second, the maximum number of the links that are possibly existing in the node. Okay, so what is the, the maximum numbers between these two four friends? Maximum number of links? Okay. There are four nodes. Maximum is like okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, maximum is six. So mathematical calculation, three multiples, four multiples three divided by two equal to six. Okay. So got one values. That is a maximum number of links that possibly is victim. Now we've got another thing, it's about actually links between these, uh, these four nodes. It's not easy for you to tell me how many links <coughs> between them. How many? Any answers? Yeah? Seven. Seven direct links. I said the maximum is a six, right? It can't be seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, maximum six. Okay, let me tell you, let me let me account. These four nodes, they are connected to each other. Okay? One, these two are not connected, but this one is connected with this, right? Two. And this one is connected to the last one. Three. Okay? All others are not connected with each other. So maximum uh, actual connection is, is a three. So only three connections are present here. The clustering coefficient of this graph is three divided by six equal to 0.5. But actually, it is very high uh, for this network. Okay, so the uh, the, the Duncan result shows that with increasing uh, the profit, uh, the random is p, okay. So the clustering coefficient is remain very high, but the average pass length drop very significantly, very quickly, okay. So you can see here means 0 0.01, which means only one percent of the lines has been rewired, rewided. So you can see like 100 uh, no lines. Only one line has been changed, so we can see the clustering coefficient is still similar to the regular network, but the average pass length 
drop very quickly to the level of the random network. From this result, we can see in the regular network, we can find two characteristics, which is a long average pass length and also high clustering coefficient. For the random network, we can find the short average pass length and the low clustering coefficient. And for the small order network, okay, the two properties are a high clustering coefficient of the vertex and also the short average pass length. Okay, now I've got another question for you. What are the two properties of the small world network? A, B, C, or D? Yeah? C. C, great. Okay, that is a high clustering coefficient and a short average pass length. Excellent. Okay, now I have so far introduced two important classes of the complex network, which is a scale-free network. Another is a small world network. Okay. Now, we try to explore it further to think about how to apply with these theories, these denominators, these kind of the mathematical models to into our design of our peer-to-peer -peer applications in the internet. The existing uh, the PLP network can be classified into two broad categories. One is called structured PLP network. Another is unstructured PLP networks. In the uh, a structured PLP network, you usually have a dedicated network structure, okay, and uh, this which establish a link between the stored content and the address. Of this node. Uh, the DHT distributed hash tables has been used okay, to build such kind of the connections between the stored content and also the address of these peer nodes. There's many popular uh, the <coughs> DHT algorithms have been used in the structured PLP network. For example, call, room, pass trees, can, uh, Kadimila. Hadimilars is widely used in the BitTorrent network. I don't know whether you use BitTorrent or not. If yes, okay, don't be so loud. Okay, I, I know. <laughs> okay, and uh, so uh, for this, uh, by using the distributed hash and tables, we can each peer node can very efficiently find desired resources by only a few queries in very efficient way, very optimized way. Uh, however, the efficiencies of a network not only relies on the number of the queries to resolve one specific request, but also the number of the messages we needed to maintain our whole network. In the, in the most of the structured PLP network, we usually need a uh, lot of messages to maintain a consistent distributed index okay, <coughs> between each node. <coughs> so, which, uh, which generated a high overhead, especially in some dynamic environment, for example, in our internet. However, in unstructured PV network, they do not need to maintain the network structures. There are also uh, many algorithms like uh, the simplicity of flooding relative deep links, neural grid, and many others. But most of the algorithms either require the high storage overhead and uh, or generate a huge uh, network traffic to the network. So what's the problem? Actually, it's very difficult okay, to, <coughs> to impose some kind of the additional control to the peer distributed peer peer network because uh, usually there's no a centralized server, okay? So any additional common true can be difficult to be achieved here. So the self-organizations could be a good way, okay, to solve the common true, the management issues of the peer-to-peer -peer networks. Let's look at it like our social network, our human society. Human society 
itself is a way of organizing uh, the systems. Okay, because our social network are formed naturally by daily and also social interaction. Our social <coughs> communities is a group of the peoples with a common interests and also sharing same similar responsibilities. The people can easily find the acquaintance, the potential have knowledge about the resources they are looking for. Okay. However, in P existing peer-to-peer -peer networks, it's very difficult it? because there's no such kind of the social network to make resource discovery very difficult. Okay, uh, similar to the social networks, okay, where people are connected by their social relationships. Okay, in the peer-to-peer -peer networks, the two autonomous peer nodes can be connected if the users behind those peer nodes are interested in each other's data. So the similarities between the social networks and the peer -to peer networks, where uh, the nodes, uh, uh, where the pe uh, nodes can be, uh, the people can be regarded as nodes, and also uh, the, uh, the, re uh, the linked connections can be regarded as personal relationships. The human tacticals in social network could be useful for improving the performance of the result discoveries by self-organizing the autonomous peer nodes in the unstructured peer-to-peer -peer networks. <coughs> in the social networks, for the result discoveries, people usually recall the information in memories to find the right person to contact. Okay, like this. For example, I want to borrow an Oxford uh, English dictionary. Okay, um, I remember I used to borrow this dictionary uh, from Dave. Okay, so I can once I need this dictionary again, I can contact Dave again for this dictionary. Okay, so for the results uh, discovered in the social network, people usually recall information memory to find the right people to contact. In the peer-to-peer -peer networks, uh, in our proposed network, ESLPs, the search algorithm preferentially forward queries to the peer nodes directly associated with the request topics, which have the greatest likelihood of finding such kind of the request files. Okay, this is the first strategy. And from here, we, we uh, model a number of this, uh, the human uh, behavior and strategies these uh, uh, models. Some of them will be introduced here. Okay, this, the next one. Uh, in most cases, okay, people cannot find a person who are directly related to their request. But people can find some acquaintance that potentially have knowledge about resources they are looking for, or can provide a kind of the background information, or give advice on how to find such resources. For example, I want to borrow an Oxford English dictionary. And uh, I can't remember. Uh, maybe I have, have never uh, bo uh, borrowed this dictionary before. Maybe oh, I can't, cannot remember clearly whether I have borrowed this before or not. But I know my friend, Dave, uh, have a, a lot of knowledge. About uh, the uh, about the linguist, okay, linguist, uh, and he's a linguist, so he probably has a dictionary. If not, he must have more knowledge, okay, than me who has the dictionary, okay. In this case, Dave may not have the dictionary, but he will use his own knowledge to help me find these specific resources uh, in a high uh, high likelihood. Okay, so in our proposed uh, the algorithms, the queries are forwarded to the peer node sharing content associated with interest areas of the request topic in local friend list. Okay, uh, so we prefer to forward such kind of queries to the peer nodes, which highly correlated with my queries, okay, instead of the, pe uh, the other peer nodes with low degrees of the uh, correlation. 
Okay, in the social networks, the newly uh, joined the persons of normally are more active to adapt to the new environment. When he or she <coughs> seek out help in a new society, the communications with other people who can be of assistance is not normally restricted, not normally limited to an exchange of the assistance. Often, he or she would like to know more about the persons who can be of assistance in order to expand his or her knowledge in the new society. Okay? So, which may be useful at a later time. So, new, new members usually is more active okay, to adapt to the new environment. It's not only to passively collect the information from occasionally, uh, occasional daily <coughs> the, the events, but also more actively to collect information to get some impressions of the people in these groups about uh, their background. In the, our proposed uh, the models, we, we are going in a similar way. So uh, the two kinds of queries are generated in different uh, strategies of the search, uh, stages of the search, known as ordinary search and also active search. For ordinary queries, the target nodes sharing the desired files will respond to the information only uh, strictly related to the request topic only. But for the active queries, the target nodes will not only respond to the request topic, but also inform the query originators of the other associated interest information it shares in the same interest area. So each piano can collect more than one piece, uh, uh, more than one piece of files from each uh, search. In total, I generate uh, uh, models the eight the, uh, social behaviors, uh, social strategies, and also implement them into the peer-to-peer -peer networks. So generally speaking, the, each peer node can learn from the both uh, from the search result in both success and failure to make their future search more focused. And each peer nodes prefer, uh, uh, so prefer to score their queries to the peer nodes that, that share the uh, resources or has knowledge about who is sharing this type of resources. And uh, as I mentioned, okay, the small network has two characteristics. Okay? High clustering coefficient and short average Pass length. Okay, we also measure these two characteristics, two parameters in our proposed uh, the, uh, the, uh, the peer to peer networks. So, from the top two figures, we can see uh, these uh, small world phenomena have, has been observed in our networks with a short average pass length and also a high clustering coefficient. In the bottom uh, the, uh, the diagram, we can also see proposed algorithm achieved better performance okay, com and efficiencies compared to the existing peer-to-peer -peer search algorithms. So uh, the proposed uh, the ESRP, the proposed algorithms, is uh, has is a self adaptability. Okay. Each peer nodes have the self adaptabilities to modify their behaviors according to the environmental change. And each peer node is able to self adapt searches by using different type of the queries according to their own situations to quickly adapt to the changing environment and also self-justify the following degrees according to the probabilities of the successful successfully finding the request files. This is also self-organizing the algorithms where each peer nodes can automatically detect the potential interest the other peer nodes in the networks and also preferentially linked to the peer nodes that have similar or same interests. Then group behaviors then emerge as a result of the local behaviors that occurs and the peer nodes that have same interests will gradually connect to each other and form the peer communities spontaneously over time. If you're interested in the research presented in today's lectures, 
So here is a reading list for you. I think the work, the broad, uh, the background readings is also very important to these modules. Okay. So there are some journal papers uh, published uh, in uh, related to, to, to today's talk. Okay. In summary. Okay. So today we have introduced two <coughs> well-known classes of the complex network. One is a scale-free network. Another is a small world network. We also discussed the factors leading to the complex network. Okay, we introduced the rich get richer models. Okay, in the, in the World Wide Web, it's called preferential uh, uh, attachment. We also introduced some key characteristics of the scale-free network and also the small world network. In the scale-free network, there's uh, the power law distributions of the connectivities. Majority of PNO, PNOs only have one of, uh, very few connections, a uh, very few PNOs have large amount of the connections. In the small world networks, we can observe the short average path length and also high uh, clustering coefficient. We also give you a, another case study based on my, based on my previous research to discuss how to apply such small world <coughs> series to develop innovative query routing strategies in peer-to-peer -peer network. Okay, I hope you will like uh, today's uh, the, uh, uh, the talks. If you have any questions about the topic and slides, please email me with this email address. Okay, thank you very much.